All right, so we're back with another video. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how we can actually handle uh, selecting menu options. Cause right now we're able to select the options from the drop-down menu, right? But it doesn't do anything right now. So how do we actually, how do we actually handle that, right? So let me show you what I mean. So if I go over to my server and if I were to select something, nothing would happen because we're not handling that situation. So let's go into our code and what we're going to do is we're going to go inside the interaction create event handler right over here. So you'll see that right over here on line 35, if you can see this, let me zoom in a little bit. You can see that, let me just also move the terminal down here. So you can see that on line 35, we have this condition. We are checking to see if the interaction is a chat input command. Now here's the thing, right? chat inputs are not the only types of interactions right slash commands are not the only types of interactions that can occur there's many different types of interactions and the one that we're actually working with right now is a drop menu interaction so there's different types if we were actually if we were to actually reference the interaction object and if we uh were to look at the methods you can see that there's actually another method called is select the menu and what that means is that it's checking to see if that interaction is related to a select menu interaction. Right? It's basically checking if it is a select menu interaction. So the way we're going to handle select menus is we'll go ahead and check to see if, well, we'll write an else if condition. So after if interaction is check input command, we'll do else if interaction is a select menu. Okay. And now one more thing that you also notice is that uh, there's different types of interaction instances, right? So for example, a select menu, uh, a select menu interaction will have different, will might have different uh, methods and such compared to like a chat input command interaction. And I'll show you that in just a second. But what I want to show you is now, uh, if I were to just write a console log and I'll just say, hello. And if I save, and let's just wait for a bot to log in, which it did, and I do slash order, and I'll select pizza, you're going to see that in the logs it says hello, right? Because now it recognizes, uh, it's we're now handling the situation when we are interacting with select menus, okay? Now let's actually do something even more than just log hello. Let's actually respond to the user. So what I'll do is I'll do interaction dots, uh, and let's just do reply. Let's just do a simple reply. Let's do content. And then let's just say hello. Just show you how this works. Okay. Now again, there's a lot of other things that we can do. We'll explore the docs in just a second. But I just want to show you this as a quick example of how to handle interactions. And it also becomes a lot more complex too because you might have uh, multiple different types of select menu interactions. And I'll show you how to handle that as well. So let's do slash order. Let's select cake. And you can see that it responded to us, which is great. We know that this is working just fine. Now let's just cover a couple of situations, right? Let's say if we have multiple different uh, select menus, right? Because right now uh, we have only one select menu over here, right? And if we were to create another select menu, it also fall under this else if condition because it's also a select menu interaction, right? Now, the way that you can handle multiple different select menus is by using or not using, you would actually have to check to see the custom ID of the interaction right over here. There's this custom ID property that you can reference on interaction right now. I don't know if a regular, yeah, so you can see that right over here, a chat input command interaction does not actually have the custom ID property. And this is what I was talking about, how different interaction types will have different uh, properties and methods right uh because right now this object over here it's inferred as just the base interaction and when you write if else conditions right uh typescript or not typescript javascript like the code itself it will infer the type for you because you're checking to see what type of interaction it is which is a good feature okay so i just figured i'd mention that okay so let's go ahead and console log interaction 
I'll console log the interaction just so you can see what is actually being logged, okay? And then you can start to think about what type of, uh, what, what data you can work with. But you'll see that the custom ID uh, will be what we set it as up top over here as food options. And you'll see that in just a second. And I'll also create a separate select menu just to show you uh, how this works. Just to show you the differences, okay? Let's wait for it to log in. So let's do slash order. Pizza. Okay, let's look at the logs now. And let's just scroll up a little bit. Uh, let's see. So we have select main interaction. We have uh, the ID. Let's look for the custom ID. There we go. Custom ID food option. So we know that we can go ahead and reference custom ID to check to see what kind of interaction or what kind of select or which select menu we're working with because you might have multiple different ones. Right, let's go ahead and uh, let me do one more thing. Let me actually see if I can actually add a second select menu. I wonder if I actually could. Let me do that real quick. I never actually, like I said, I'm not, I don't really work too much with uh, uh, slash commands these days. So I'm kind of experimenting with a lot of different things. But let me just uh, try out some stuff. Might as well. So let's go ahead and see if we could do this. So let's add this. Whoops. We go ahead and add orange juice. Uh, Coca-Cola. All right. And let's see if this actually works. I'm curious to find out if it works. Um, according to the docs, we can have... Uh, I, don't, I didn't see it saying anything about uh the uh limit or oh, the limit is five you can have up to five action rows okay but what about the uh the components inside the action rows i didn't really see any um uh, i didn't really see much limitations the only limitation is that you cannot have an action row inside an action row okay that's fine uh has our bot logged in no it has not that's kind of annoying taking forever to log in as usual okay there we go all right so let's try this out let's do slash order Think we have an error yeah it seems like we have an error it seems like uh the specific exceeds, exceeds the maximum width so it seems like we actually cannot have or maybe i did this wrong action row component uh let's see did i do this wrong uh let me see okay yeah so according to the docs it says that select menus uh an action row can only contain one select menu um so i guess that's okay though i wonder i think maybe we might need yeah it says we can have five action rows per message so i think we'll have to create one more action row let's do const action row drinks menu here's new action row builder let's do that and we can go ahead and just add another action row component like this because remember right you can only you can have up to max five and this is an array of components so we can as, add as much as we we can add up to five okay not as much but because there is a limit but let's try this now and hopefully this works it should work i don't think we should have any issues I definitely want to make sure that you all can see this a clear example. So different kind of recipes that you can work with later on. And all the code will be on a Git repository, so don't worry. All right, so let's go into our Discord server. Let's do slash order. And now you can see we have two. We have the orange juice and Coca-Cola. So now watch this. If I select cake, okay, it's going to go ahead and log food options if i go ahead and select orange juice it's going to go ahead and select uh the it's going to show drink options so notice how the first one it distinguished it by the custom id food options and the second one the custom id was drink options now i think there should be a way where if the user selects an item it should probably remove the uh 
I wanted to remove the drop menu, but we won't worry about that for now. But because that's not our main point, right? But you can see that right now we have two different select menus and we're able to distinguish it by the custom ID. So you'll need to uh, you'll need to go ahead and write an if else statement inside this logic, right? And you have to check to see what the custom ID is, right? So for example, if the interaction custom ID, because we already know that this is a select menu interaction, right? So if it's equal to food options, we'll do something. And if it's equal to something else, we might have multiple more select menus. So we'll write an else if instead of just an else, because there might be other others, right? Then we'll handle that. So if it's food options, we can do something. If it's drink options, we can do something else, right? So that's how you would handle select menus. Yeah, that's going to be pretty much it for this video. In the next video, I'll show you some more things that you can do with interactions, such as uh, working with modals. Uh, that's also a pretty cool one, in my opinion. There's a lot of different types of interactions that you can work with. So we'll definitely cover more than just, uh, you know, slash commands. Okay, so uh, that's going to be pretty much it. Hopefully you all enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.